1996, a class-based first-person shooter mod was developed for Quake by TF Software. It was called Team Fortress. And those developers would later go on to be hired by Valve to port this Team Fortress as a mod of Valve's game Half-Life. This new mod, called Team Fortress Classic, would be released in 1999. Why is any of this important, you ask? Well, you know that game, Team Fortress? It's actually the game that came before Team Fortress 2. Yes, it's true! As shocking as it is, there is a TF1! Though I would be willing to bet that most of us never played Team Fortress Classic before playing TF2, if we ever played it at all. I mean, I certainly didn't. I only started playing Team Fortress Classic fairly recently. And TFC has always been kind of mysterious to me. No one really talks about it much anymore, and while the TF2 wiki does have some basic info on TFC as well, it's not nearly as fleshed out or as expansive as the TF2 info. And playing Team Fortress Classic recently it got me thinking, what if we really compare each of the classes in TF2 to their original counterparts? To see how much stayed the same and how much changed in TF2's 9 years of development. Then just for fun, we'll try to determine which class would win 1v1. And I think the Heavy Weapons guy would be a good place to start the series off, seeing how he's kind of the most iconic class in each game. And yes, we did see how this went down in the comics, but I'm not talking about the comics here. I'm talking about both heavies in their prime. Who would win? In the blue corner, we have the original Two Fort Terrorizer, the leader of the classic team, the Heavy Weapons guy. And in the red corner, with his minigun weighing in at 150 kilograms, he puts the heavy in heavy weapons, the other heavy weapons guy. Okay, stock weapons only, no medics, I want a good clean fight here. We're gonna start off with the basic attributes of the characters. The TF2 heavy is, of course, known for his huge amount of health that is significantly higher than the other classes in the game. However, the TFC heavy, while also having the highest health, shares that stat with both the TFC pyro and soldier. And that health is 100. Yeah, it's just 100. Lower than any of the class's standard health in TF2. But there is one more teensy little detail. All of the classes in Team Fortress Classic have armor. There are three types of armor, light, medium, and heavy, and each class has their own set of armor points. Armor will absorb a certain percentage of damage taken. So upon taking damage, you will lose both health and armor depending on the strength of the armor and how much armor points you have. Light armor absorbs 30%, medium 60%, and heavy 80%. You could probably already guess that Heavy does in fact have heavy armor. And not only does he have heavy armor, but he also has by far the most armor points in the game with 300. So for example, if something hit the Heavy that had a base damage of 100, he would lose 80 armor points and 20 health points. And of course the Heavy will only die if he loses all his health points. If you want an actual in-game example, the Crowbar has a base damage of 18 per hit. When hit by it, my health is reduced by 4, and the other 14 damage is taken away from my armor total. So this does mean that the original Heavy actually has the advantage here despite having one third the base health. He has the best type of armor and he has a lot of it. If both characters were hit by an attack with a base damage of 300, the TF2 Heavy would just die, while the TFC Heavy would live with 40 health and 60 armor to spare. So the winner of this category is gonna be the original Heavy Weapons guy. The next category is Speed which is not exactly Heavy's forte, and even less so in the original game, where the TFC Heavy had a run speed of 76%. Team Fortress 2 sped him up to 77%. Uh, hey, a win's a win, and this one goes to the TF2 Heavy. Both versions of Heavy will also take reduced knockback compared to other classes. I'm willing to bet that there are probably more exemptions to this in TF2 than there are in TFC, but we'll call this one a tie. Okay, now we're gonna get to the good stuff. The heavy weapons guys, weapons. In Team Fortress Classic, your slot 1 weapon is actually your melee, so we'll start with that. And like most of the classes in TFC, his melee weapon is a crowbar. And it sucks. It's really bad. Like I said earlier, it only deals 18 damage, and there's no way to increase that. That's nearly half of what Scout's Bat deals in TF2, and Scout's Bat itself is already not a very strong weapon. And the heavy's fists in TF2 have a base damage of 65. So that means the crowbar would have to hit four times before it's able to outdamage just one hit of the fists. However, on the bright side, the crowbar does swing much faster than the fists do. And to have some kind of consistent measurement of damage output between these two games, we'll be looking at which weapons are able to deal 100 damage first. So in Team Fortress Classic, we'll be using the heavy with no armor. 
This means he only has 100 health and that's it. And in Team Fortress 2, we'll be using a spy with a big earner who also only has 100 health. And we're gonna see which melee weapon is able to deal 100 damage faster. And unsurprisingly, it's the fists. Despite the slower swing speed, the fists are able to kill the spy in 0.98 seconds with 2 hits, and the crowbar takes 2.1 seconds with 6 hits. So TF2 is the clear winner here. Alright, the TFC classes generally have more weapons than their TF2 counterparts. Heavy has two shotguns, taking up his second and third weapon slots. The single-barreled shotgun and the double-barreled shotgun. The thing is, I'm not sure why you would ever use a single-barreled shotgun over the double-barreled shotgun in any circumstance. The single fires faster, reloads faster, and uses less ammo, but its damage output is terrible, dealing only a max of 24 damage if all of the pellets connect. It takes 19 point-blank shots from the single-barreled shotgun to kill a full-health, full-armored heavy. Yeah, that's right, I said 19 shots. The shotgun in TF2 can kill a full-health heavy in 4 shots. If this weapon was in TF2, it would be one of the worst weapons in the game. So you might say the TFC heavy wins this round by default because he has 4 weapons where the TF2 heavy only has 3, but no, the TFC heavy loses this round because he has this. This weapon is awful. We're going to be comparing the TF2 shotgun to its much better counterpart, the double-barreled shotgun. The double-barreled shotgun has 16 ammo loaded, but uses 2 each time it's fired, effectively making it 8 total. It fires 14 pellets that deal 4 damage each, meaning it's able to deal a minimum of 4 damage and a maximum of 56 if all of the pellets connect. The TF2 shotgun only holds 6 shots and only fires 10 pellets, but those 10 pellets have a base damage of 6. But there's also one more key difference. There is no ramp up or fall off in TFC. Where damage in TF2 is generally increased or decreased depending on your distance from the target, in TFC it's always the same. For example, the TFC sniper's automatic rifle will always deal 8 damage no matter what distance it hits me from. The nail gun will always deal 9 per hit, and engineer's rail gun will always deal 23, etc. The bullet spread of some weapons, like shotguns, obviously makes them better for close range, but just in terms of damage, range generally won't have the same effect as it does in TF2. So at close range, while a double-barreled shotgun deals 54, damage ramp-up allows a TF2 shotgun to deal up to 90. The TF2 shotgun also fires just a tiny bit faster, allowing him to kill the 100 health spy just a fraction of a second quicker. But from the middle of the two-fort bridge, the TFC shotgun has the obvious advantage, killing in just 4 shots compared to the TF2 shotgun's 9. And while the double-barreled shotgun does have more shots, and is clearly better from longer distances, I think the TF2 shotgun's higher max damage at close range makes it the winner. It's a shotgun that's better at the range that shotguns are normally going to be used in, so yeah, I think the TF2 one wins. And finally, we have the heaviest of heavies weapons. The moment you've probably all been waiting for. The TFC Assault Cannon versus the TF2 Minigun. Sasha versus Ol Assaulty. The two weapons are functionally very similar, but share quite a few important differences. Both guns, of course, require a spin-up time before they can begin firing. The assault cannon takes about 0.62 seconds, and the minigun requires about 0.85 seconds. For comparison, that means the assault cannon actually spins up even a little bit faster than the Tomislav. And both weapons also normally carry 200 reserve ammo. But the assault cannon fires ever so slightly faster. It'll finish firing all 200 ammo in 20 seconds compared to the minigun's 21 seconds. But there is a negative for the assault cannon here. It shares the same ammo as Heavy's other weapons. The single-barreled shotgun, the double-barreled shotgun, and the assault cannon all use the same shells ammo and all draw from the same ammo pool. This means you could lower your cannon ammo without even using it. And that's a problem that the minigun just doesn't have. In more negative news for the assault cannon, it slows the classic Heavy down more than the minigun does, reducing his speed to about one-third of normal, while the minigun reduces heavy speed to 37%, just barely under half of his normal 77% move speed. However, in the original game, you could actually jump while spun up with the Assault Cannon, where in TF2, you can't jump at all while spun up. So there's a pro there. But possibly the biggest downside of all, the Assault Cannon cannot be pre-spun up. The secondary fire button does nothing for the TFC Heavy. So while it does take less time to fire when you need it than the minigun does, it can't be readied ahead of time. Well, at least not easily. I have heard that heavies would sometimes just tap the firing button over and over to briefly put the assault cannon in a state of spinning so that it would be ready when they need it, which just sounds incredibly tedious. But probably the most important aspect here is how much damage can they deal. The assault cannon can deal up to 32 damage per hit and fires 10 times a second, 
meaning its max damage output is 320 per second. A very respectable number. The minigun, on the other hand, can deal a max of 54 damage per hit, and also fires basically 10 times a second, making its max DPS 540, which completely blows the assault cannon out of the water. The minigun is capable of dealing over 100 damage in about 0.2 seconds, while the assault cannon takes 0.4 seconds. But that's only if the minigun has been pre-spun up for more than one second. For whatever reason, since the Love and War update, the minigun has had an additional ramp up for its first second, where it starts out dealing half damage and increases to full damage over that second. So if the minigun has just spun up, it actually takes about 0.43 seconds to kill that spy. Similarly, when fired from the middle of the bridge, the assault cannon will kill slightly faster than the minigun if the minigun wasn't pre-spun up, and slightly slower if it was. So pre-spinning can make a pretty big difference for the minigun's damage output for its first second of firing. However, at very long range, the assault cannon is the clear winner. The lack of damage falloff really helps it at this distance, but it's still not exactly something to write home about. Neither of these weapons were designed for or are very effective at long range attacking. And while there are a few situations where the assault cannon does have the advantage, overall I think the minigun is the much better weapon. Being able to spin up without firing is incredibly useful. The minigun is also capable of having a higher damage output at the ranges that matter, and it also doesn't even slow you down as much. So again, the winner is TF2. But the TFC Heavy does have another trick up its sleeve. Grenades. In Team Fortress Classic, all classes have some form of throwable grenade. Heavy has four standard hand grenades and two MIRV grenades. The hand grenades have a four second fuse and can deal between 50 and 145 damage. The MIRV grenade will explode and then split into smaller bombs. These are very powerful tools for spamming choke points and gives the TFC Heavy a way of dealing indirect damage against enemies not in his sight. Which is something that TF2 Heavy just doesn't have. Throwable grenades were cut from TF2 during development for good reasons, but still, this is a very good option that the TF2 Heavy has no similar alternative for. And obviously, that's going to mean that the TFC Heavy wins this round. But who wins overall? All those previous rounds? They were pointless! What happens when it comes down to the 1v1? Well, they're about tied mobility-wise, but the original Heavy is made quite a bit bulkier because of his heavy armor and high number of armor points. Though the TF2 Heavy pretty handily outmatches him in all of their available weapons. That is, except for grenades, which of course he doesn't have. Now, in the absolute most ideal scenario, the TFC Heavy would be able to kill a full health TF2 Heavy with the Assault Cannon in exactly one second if he was already spun up and able to connect every pellet. The TF2 Heavy would be able to kill a full health, full armor TFC Heavy in 0.8 seconds with a minigun at point blank range if every pellet connected and the minigun had already been spun up for one second beforehand. So in the absolute most ideal scenario for each class, the TF2 Heavy comes out on top by a fraction of a second. But is it really fair to make that decision on the absolute best case scenario for each class? Cause if we did, nobody would ever beat the TF2 Heavy. I'm fairly positive that no stock weapon in either game has a higher potential DPS than the minigun. But that's also not how Team Fortress, or any game really, is played. It's never gonna be just an empty vacuum. While the TF2 Heavy does have better weapons overall, the TFC Heavy would be able to get chip damage or even severely damage him with grenades while staying out of the minigun's line of fire, in a similar way that Demoman and Soldiers do with their explosives in TF2. The TFC Heavy is also able to tank considerably more damage due to his armor. And if both heavies begin spinning up at the same time, the Assault Cannon's faster spin-up would allow him to kill the TF2 Heavy first, especially if you also factor in the minigun's additional ramp-up. The only scenario aside from the ideal in which I think the TF2 Heavy definitively wins is in a defensive one where he's pre-spun up and either catches the TFC Heavy off guard or comes around a corner. The ability to spin up without firing is a huge benefit, but ultimately in an open area it comes down to who starts firing first. And while I think the TF2 Heavy has better weapons and is a better balanced character overall, in a 1v1 between just these two classes up against each other, I think the TFC Heavy wins. With the Assault Cannon spinning up faster, his massive amount of armor, and grenades for spam and chip damage, I think the Team Fortress Classic Heavy wins out in the end. That's right, in a stunning upset, the original Heavy Weapons guy defeats his iconic sequel counterpart. Was this the outcome you were expecting? Will the other TF2 classes meet the same fate? We can find out in the next round! Let me know which class you want to see go up against their original version, and we'll see what happens. 
This was a lot of fun to make, and is surprisingly something I don't think I've seen anyone else do before. Like I said, not a lot of people talk about TFC. But a lot of people do talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare! You know, sometimes I think, what if there was some kind of community? One that was online, and also made for learning. Well, you're in luck, me, because there is. And it's Skillshare, the online learning community. You want to learn about, uh, how to invest in stocks? Well, there's a class for that, and it breaks it all down. Stocks aren't your speed? What about drawing, or graphic design? Skillshare's got tons of classes for all sorts of things. Maybe you're thinking, there's no way there's enough classes for me there. Well, there are new ones all the time. And you yourself can see these classes for free for a whole month with a link in the description, so check it out. And we can't forget about everyone else who helps out, like, I don't know, maybe Varric, maybe Captain Forex, Egux, Dex, Zero Attention, Presumably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pillsman's Fox, Kybrid96, Scout with a Name, Glump, Salt God, Tyler the Sheba, who also helped me out with some of the uh, TFC info on this video, Professor Dunce, and Lavi, as well as all the other patrons. So, thanks for watching, and peace out, dogs.